Hi, my name is Jelle Zelstra. I'm an industrial designer and a design teacher at the TU Delft. The problem definition answers three basic questions. The what, the how and the why of your project. To make these more concrete, we have listed this set of questions. In order to answer these, you use the findings of the research that you have done. So let's take a closer look at each of the questions. What is the problem? Here you define the human activity that is currently happening in an undesirable way. Then elaborate and define whether there is a problem with your user's behavior or interaction with other people and products. Who has the problem? It makes a lot of difference whether you design for children, adults, athletes or elderly people, etc. People differ greatly in their preferences, experience and expectations, but also in body measurements and physical ability. What are the relevant context factors? In what kind of environment will the design be used? Inside, outside, in freezing conditions or in hot conditions? In what kind of space or place? In which country and in what kind of cultural, cultural environment? What is the desired outcome? Or maybe better, what is the desired effect? What interactions between people and products do you need to influence to create that effect? For example, the desired outcome of a barbecue is not only roasted meat, but also a pleasant interaction between people. Avoid mentioning the obvious product, but focus on the effect of your design. In this way, you leave open enough space for all kinds of solutions. What side effects need to be avoided? Imagine unintended use of your design or other unwanted results. Play devil's advocate. People often use well-intended products in a very different way than you think. Which actions are admissible? You can imagine rigorous solutions that are culturally unacceptable or even not allowed by law. In many cases, you have to take into account certain norms and safety regulations. So let's take a look at a familiar subject people complain about a lot, traffic jams. This example is not intended to be complete but it shows you the kind of thoughts that you might develop when you are answering the questions. When you are in a traffic jam, you might conclude that the roads are too narrow and more roads need to be built. Analyzing and redefining the problem results, results in a broader perspective and need to look at more innovative solutions. So let's apply our questions to traffic jams. What is the problem? In the city center, traffic jams lead to time loss, frustrations, unsafe situations and air pollution. Who has the problem? Urban commuters who travel between home and work by car in densely populated areas. What is the context? Jobs are concentrated in the city centre and everybody needs to be at work at the same time. People leave, live in the suburbs because it is more pleasant to live there and they are used to a high degree of mobility. At the same time, people want sustainable solutions. So what is the desired outcome? More room for slow traffic and a clean, pleasant living environment. A working culture in which people can be more flexible with their working hours. What side effects need to be avoided? Less mobility could lead to a less dynamic city center. Shop owners are worried about a turnover in case cars would be banned. What is admissible? People can't be forced into different behavior. They have to be able to choose. There are many kinds of solutions to this. The city of London, for example, has chosen for road pricing and installed the congestion charge. This stimulated people to travel together or to use public transport, bicycles or electric cars. It resulted in less traffic jams and less smog. So working with a problem and a design goal as a starting point instead of an existing product opens up doors to unexpected and more innovative solutions. To keep you sharp, I would like to finish with an example where the problem is more diffuse. Bicycle saddle manufacturers are always looking for ways to solve the problem of saddle sore. Usually they will make redesigns of the saddle because that's the business they're in. But by studying the subject and by talking to experienced cyclists, they might discover that the most effective way to solve saddle sore is to allow the cyclist to continuously change position during a long ride. So
So the problem of saddle sore is not only situated in the saddle, but just as much in the handlebars. That is why during the 90s, the so-called butterfly handlebars were introduced for trekking bikes, which enables four different riding positions. Based on this analysis and solution, a saddle manufacturer might decide to move into the design and production of handlebars as well. I hope this inspires you to define your own design challenge and to do the assignment that goes with this video. Thank you for watching.